Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion, setting forth his sovereignty, and the old paths of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious Word of Sovereign Grace. Here's this week's message. Do that, so. <clears throat> Very much interested in your prayers this morning while I stand before you. <clears throat> Go ahead and let these brethren who follow know that I'll be very mindful of the time. I'm going to try to stand up, speak up, shut up, and sit down. <clears throat> Once again, I've thoroughly enjoyed my visit to Cozad, Nebraska. As I was talking to Sister Elaine before service this morning, you just don't happen to phone Cozad, Nebraska. From southwest Mississippi. So it's not something you run up on. It's a desire to come and worship with the people here that we've grown to love over the years. And we appreciate so much the hospitality that's been afforded us at the Hotel Hobby Locks. If you've never stayed there, I highly recommend it. And for your kindness that's been shown to us since we've been here. Just as a starting point, we'll read couple of verses found in Psalm 145. Psalm 145, verse 1 says, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Verse 3, Great is the Lord. Brother, that's all we need to hear this morning. If we shut it down right now, they're preaching that right there. Great is the Lord. There's two precious sisters that joined the church I pastor. Back down in Louisiana, one's 80-something, one's 70-something. They were just baptized in the church. We're not old Baptists. Never been old Baptists. And one of the comments they said to me, that in the old Baptist church, the Lord is great. <laughs> And that's exactly what we ought to proclaim this morning, that great is our Lord above all things. It's not about what we can do this morning or what we have done, but it's about what the Lord has done for us. I'm going to let you know that I work with the Lord on a 50-50 basis. Do not get nervous. I'm about to get myself out of the ditch. The Lord does all the saving and I do all the sinning. That's why you are. The Lord is taking care of things. He's great. And I'm going to tell you, I believe since we got here Thursday night, Brother Steve, that's what we've heard preached here, that great is the Lord. I haven't heard anything about how good we are and what we've done, but I've heard what the Lord has done for us. <clears throat> great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I didn't come to praise anybody here this morning, not a single one of you. I come to praise the Lord and worship Him this morning, both in spirit and and in truth. And Brother Thomas made the comment, it's hard for him to be the one to stop the song service. It's hard for me to get up here and preach after such a, a powerful song service. But the Lord will bless. I hope to bring something to your pure minds this morning and stir it up by way of remembrance. Exodus chapter 11. Exodus chapter 11 is where we like to go this morning. Exodus chapter 11 just to start with, reading verse 7. It says, But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. If you were to turn back to chapter... Um, it is chapter 9. Let's see if I can find it here that I'm looking for. Verse 6. Exodus 9, verse 6. Just showing you a couple of the differences that's pointed out here. Just I'm going to show you two, and then I want to move on. But in Exodus chapter 9, verse 6, it says, And the Lord did that thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died. But of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. 
that'd be that'd be pretty difficult to explain if I lived across the road from Brother Howard over there and he had his cattle on one side of the road and had mine on the other side. All of his was still living and all of mine died. That'd be unbelievable. That's what happened. That's exactly what happened. All, all of the cattle of the nation of Egypt died and all the ones of Israel lived. Let me read a verse for you in verse, uh, chapter 10, uh, <clears throat> verse 23. Once again, just pointing out some differences here that, that's between the nation of Israel and Egypt. Verse 23 in, in Exodus 10. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. Maybe I should have go back up here just a little bit. Verse 21 and read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. That would be a little difficult to understand, wouldn't it? If you don't understand the power of God, friends, there's a lot of things that's hard to understand. It's impossible to understand if you don't understand the power of God. You can't believe in a virgin birth. You can't believe in a Savior who came from heaven down to this world to seek and to save them that were lost. You cannot believe that unless you understand the power of God. And when you understand the power of God, you've got to go back a little further than that and understand the total depravity of man. But now let's only look at something here this morning. Because I believe there's something a little, bit, little better than this <coughs> contained in these scriptures here. So that ye may know how the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. <clears throat> There's one other place I wanted to turn to. <laughs> let, me, let me turn there quickly. Exodus chapter 14. Where they crossed the Red Sea. And you know what? There was a difference right there at that Red Sea. Because all of the nation of Israel crossed the Red Sea on dry land. And what happened to Pharaoh's army and his host? They were drowned right there in that Red Sea. There was a difference between the nation of Israel and the land of Egypt. Now, let me point something out here very clearly. How many of you this morning believe that there is a natural difference between them? From a natural standpoint of being a natural man, was there a difference between the nation of Israel and the land of Egypt? Was there a difference? Well, let's turn to Romans chapter 3 and pick up some terminology there in Romans 3. Here's what it says. One says, What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there a circumcision? And then he says, much every way. He says, there is a difference. <laughs> there is a difference. Hang on to me. Don't, don't let, let me lose you. Hang on. He says, because unto them were committed the oracles of God. The Jew did have advantage in some way. Understand that. But that's not my question. My question is from a natural standpoint, is there a difference between the Egyptian and the Israelite? Let's come on down here. Here's what he says in verse 9. Romans 3, 9. What then are we better than they? No and no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of ass is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So now is there a natural difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites? And the answer to that question is no. All natural men are just alike. They will never seek God. They will never, they will never 
hear the things of Zion that we've heard and stir up our hearts and our minds and cause us to have a desire to live closer to the Lord. And I can tell you, that's what good preaching is going to do. It's going to stir you up and, 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 and cause you to want to live a better life. And you go out and you feel sorry and you repent for those things that you've done that are not pleasing to your Heavenly Father. <clears throat> So, what are we talking about this difference here? It's not a, about an outward name. It's not about being called a Christian. It's, this change here is of an inward nature. The circumcision is of the heart. That hard and stony heart has been taken out and a heart of flesh has been put in there. And you can. You now have the ability to praise God. And it's Him that does that. He is the one that sets that difference, you see. And that's the whole point of what I'm trying to get across to you this morning. It is not by works of righteousness which you've done. Too many of today's religious world wants to puff themselves up and say, Look what I did. And I can tell you what, they did nothing on their own, my friends. I heard my good friend Elvis Steve Wood say, Without the Lord, He can do nothing. And that's absolutely 100% correct. <laughs> he had a test there. <clears throat> had a test with one question. The question was, what can you do without the Lord? And you wrote the word nothing. You made a hundred on that test. You, you made a hundred. <clears throat> Let me tell you something about this difference too. It's not about the law of God in your hand. It's the laws that's been written upon your hearts. <laughs> That's what it's all about. That's this difference you want to talk about. And in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7. First, I could not find yesterday to save my life. I looked far to ask Brother Steve where it was, and I found it thanks to some technological advances there. But look what it says. It says, The Lord did not set His love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. He didn't choose you because you were great. He didn't choose you because you were an outstanding person. He didn't choose you because you had a lot of wealth and all the other things and because you are a good person, friends. But I tell you what, read the very next line of the next verse and it says, But because the Lord loved you. That is the difference that He said it within you is that He loved you. And let me tell you something, friends. Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says He loved you with an everlasting love. You understand that's the difference right there is He loved you and His love will never end. His love is not like our love. We have a fickle love. And I've told this before. When I was in the fourth grade, Valentine's Day, I had all my Valentine's and all the extra ones. I picked out the best ones for my girlfriend. Had about seven for my girlfriend. Her name was Mary Jane. When I got to school, she broke up with me as soon as I got to school. Oh boy, now I had a problem, didn't I? This is all about, I love Mary Jane. Not me. I had a pencil. I wrote them in pencil. <clears throat> I erased all the ones that said Mary Jane and I put Lydia on there. <laughs> My love changed that quick. God's love is not that way. Then nothing can separate us from His love. I'm going to tell you, friends, read over in Romans chapter 8, it'll tell you that all those things, there's a list there that nothing can separate us from His love. If He has cast His love on you, He will always love you. You cannot do anything to get out of the love of God. Nothing. Amen. Not a thing. You may think you can. And I can tell you, I remember, that, are, there, are there some things that ring in your ears about your childhood? <laughs> There's one thing that rings in my mind every time I think about my mother's love for me. My mother told me many a time, Son, I love you. I just don't love some of the things you do. But you see, love, Lord, the Lord loves us in spite of who we are. And He loves us with an everlasting love. His love doesn't change. <clears throat> and I may get the car before the horse. I hope to cover several points here. Ephesians chapter 1. Here's how he said the difference. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Here's the difference. According as he hath chosen us in him 
before the foundation of the world. There's the difference, friends. You didn't choose Him. He chose you. And you want to tell you how you were when He chose you? You were dead in trespasses and sins. You wasn't all lovely, dressed in your suit, ready to go to church, friend. You were dead in trespasses and sins. But yet, He chose you. A couple years ago, I was walking down the hall of the school I teach at, and two of the ladies that taught there began to inquire of me about where I went to church. And when I told them Primitive Baptist, I guarantee if you ever want a conversation, walk up, they ask you where you go to church, you say the word Primitive Baptist, you got it. You better be ready for it. Because the first question out of my mouth is, what is different between a Primitive Baptist and everybody else? Well, I'm going to tell you one of the first things I'm going to say is I believe in election. That's just one of the first things I'm going to talk about. I got news for you. That will shut down most conversations. That will shut them down. Because they don't want to hear that God chose you. That you don't have something that you must do in order to get salvation. They want to know what they have to do. And boy, those women begin to blast me. And say, boy, that's just wrong. So I chose the Lord. I know exactly when I chose Him. And I took it. I, I, I didn't get defensive. I probably should have walked away, but I began to, to continue to try to discuss this time. A black lady that talked with us walked down the hall and she heard the conversation, but she kept going. In a few minutes, as I was walking back toward my room, she caught, she caught me at the corner and said, Coach Myers, let me ask you a question. Did I hear you believe that God chose you? I said, Amen. That's yes, exactly what you heard. She said, And I believe it too. Amen. I said, Isn't that sweet? That God would choose a rotten sinner like me to be one of His children and to cast His love upon me when I am unloving? Yes. I don't think God's people ever let it really soak in their mind of how good our God is. That He loves us all the time. When we stray away from Him, when we're not here at church fulfilling our duties, He still loves us. He's not pleased with what we do, but He still loves us. He chose us in the world, and it's not because of what we were going to do down the road. That's not why He chose us. He didn't look down through time and say, well, you know, Brother Luke has So I'm going to just elect him into my fold. That's not the way it was. It's not the way it works. Let Romans 8 1 sink into your mind. There is therefore now no condemnation. You know what that tells me? I'm a logical thinker. That tells me at one point in time there must have been condemnation. Yes. What it tells me? It says there is therefore now no condemnation. You know what that means? You had a death sentence on you. You had it on you. We've had several folks executed back in Mississippi lately. That's a tough thing to be staring down knowing that you have a death penalty. That's exactly what we had. But you know what? God sent His Son. God sent His Son to die for the elect, the ones that the Father gave Him for the foundation of the world. And I can tell you exactly how many the Lord saved. I can tell you. Every one that the Father gave Him, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ saved. So now there, there's another difference. So you were condemned. You stood with a guilty verdict against you. But let me tell you something. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, there is now, therefore now, no condemnation. What a great thought that is. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm trying to move along. I'm trying to be mindful of the time. Romans 8. <clears throat> Let's see if the verse I'm, I'm trying to find here. I wanna, that, that was one of the ones I was looking at. Is there is therefore now no condemnation to which them to them which are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. 
Let me turn to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Let me turn to John 10. John, sorry, John 10 is where I want to go. John chapter 10. <clears throat> Verse 27. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. God's children, there's another difference that the Lord has put between Israel and Egypt is that the nation of Israel, representing God's people, have been given eternal life. And that gift is given sometime between conception and death for every error of promise. And it happens the same way. When you preach salvation, my grace, friends, you don't have to come up with other ways of being saved. It all happens in the same way. One of the brothers mentioned it yesterday in John chapter 6. John, uh, uh, John 3. John 3 says, The wind blow where it listeth. You know what that tells me? You don't know where it is, where it's coming from. That's the way that everyone that is born again. And by the way, if you look up that word again there, it means from above. You must be born from above. Now tell me how you can be born from above if you don't know where above is to begin with. Think about that. <laughs> look what it says here. It says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. There's a difference right there, friends. There's some going to perish. But there are some that's not going to perish. You know why they're not going to perish? Is it because they've done great things here? They went out and, and preached the Word in, the, in Cozad, Nebraska, and in southwest Mississippi, and, and in, in, tech, in Fort Worth, Texas, and, and in uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas, and Camden, Arkansas? Is that the reason they're going to be there? No, friends. It's not. It's not the reason they're, going, that they're, that they're not going to perish. It's going to be because of what the Lord has done for them. And He has preserved them. Oh, I can tell you, I believe in preservation 100%. It would be a sad thought this morning if I thought that today I could lose my salvation. That would be a sad thought. Oh, what a great thought it is to understand that we cannot lose our salvation because we are in His hands. We're in His hands. I, I appreciate so much the, the efforts of, of Brother Keith Ellis last night on that time salvation. There's so many folks who just can't understand it to save their life. I got news for you, friends. I know a ways to save myself here in this life. I know the ways to do it. There are some ways to save myself here in this life. But when it comes to eternal life, I have absolutely nothing to do with it. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it all. We, I tell you, I just don't understand how some folks can sing some of the songs they sing because they don't really believe them. You ever heard the song, Jesus Saves? You ever heard the song, Jesus Saves, Jesus Saves? I think they need to paraphrase and say, Jesus Saves if you will let Him. Jesus Saves. If you'll let Him. Or, Jesus almost paid it all. I tell you, friends, Jesus paid it all. And all to Him I owe. I don't owe Brother Thomas Bond a thing. I don't owe him a thing. He's been to visit down here, and I didn't come just to repay the visit. He's been down to Mississippi to visit. I didn't come up here just to return the visit. That's not why I came. If that's why you came, friends, you came for the wrong reason. It's not about keeping up with numbers of visits. It's about when you come into the house of the Lord that you worship both in spirit and in truth. And I can tell you what, friend, this is to understand that, that the Lord has put a difference between Israel and Egypt. The Lord's done it. You don't do it yourself. You know, I get amazed at young folks today who think that they're different from everybody else. But yet they're just like everybody else. They got their pants down below their behind. You know, they got their hat cocked sideways. And I step on anybody's toes. I'm like Brother Danny. I just, if it's the truth, it hurts. Just, you got to deal with it. These guys with these earrings. I just can't, I, I, I just can't stand them. I guess I was raised down there in the south. 
Ray's old school, and I don't tell you what, Brother Steve, I'm going to die old school. Way, that's the way all Dwayne Myers raised man. That's the way I'm going to die. Old school. I like men to be men. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like men to step up and be a man about it. And I can tell you what, that we need more men in the whole Baptist church. Right? We do. <laughs> Them who look and say, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. And I can tell you, if I, Ricky Myers ever offends you, you got one thing I want you to do. That's to come to Ricky Myers. He will bow down. He will bow down to keep peace in the Lord's church. That's what it's about. And I tell you what, that's because the Lord has set the difference. The old Ricky Myers couldn't care what you thought about. He couldn't care what you were thinking. If he hurt your feelings, so what? Get over it. But I can tell you what, that's not the way this Ricky Myers is now. And it's not because I woke up one morning and said I'd be a nicer person. Because the Lord did a work on the heart. He set the difference. He turned old hard-headed, bull-headed, one-direction person into one who can love as he should. And I tell you what, if you will promise me that you will love me, despite all my faults, I tell you what, I love you too. I love you anyway. Even if you don't love me for mine. Brother Steve had picked at me a lot. He keeps telling me that I've got something on my wife. There's no way a beautiful woman like that would marry an ugly guy like me. I can tell you what. My love for her is absolutely unconditional. She could leave me today and it wouldn't change my love for her. I wouldn't have the opportunity to express it as I should. But see, that's the way the Lord is with us. I'm not encouraging you to go out and live like the world. I'm telling you the Scripture says love not the world. And if you don't love the world, it's because the Lord has set a difference in your heart. If you don't love, I tell you, I despise the world. I despise all these things that they think are just okay. If it's okay for a man to marry a man and a woman to marry a woman, then my Bible is wrong. Because this is an abomination unto him. And I believe this, and not picking on Brother Steve, if the Lord had intended for a man to marry a man, he would have made Adam and Steve, not Adam and Eve. That's what I believe. But he made a woman as a help me. And I can tell you what, I fully believe what I'm about to tell you. But if God blesses you with a spouse, that spouse will compliment you perfectly. All your weaknesses will be her strengths. I can tell you. Men, listen to what I'm about to tell you. My wife gets on me a lot of times because when I start looking, well, let me back it up. When I want something, before I begin to look for it, I will ask her if she knows where it is. And she will always say, have you looked for it yet? And my answer is always, not yet, because I know you'll know where it is. And when I look around the house, when she can tell you, hey, it's right there. Got to look for my belt this morning. I, well, I didn't look for it yet. I asked where my belt was. And she said, it's behind the rocking chair. It fell. See, she knew where it was. Well, let me tell you something, friends. Remember this, that the Lord has set a difference. And it's the Lord's work. It's what He's done. It's not what these preachers have, have done. You know what they've, they've come and done? They've come and preached a powerful Lord. One that can work and none can hinder. And He can hinder and none can work. May the Lord bless you. Sovereign Grace, prayer. a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.